Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to go through the scamper method of designing when it comes to creating logos for your cafe design. So what I've done is I've set up an A3 page like so, I've divided it into eight different sections. One for an original logo design, so you only need to do one, and then several other spaces, one for each letter of the scamper, S-C-A-M-P-E-R, and I'll go through each of them as I go through the designs. So I've done one original design, which is what you're required to do to begin with. Uh, the name is up to you, but it does need to incorporate a fruit or vegetable in some format. So as you can see, I've used the pineapple as part of that. The S stands for substitute. And what that means is that you need to change a feature of the design with something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna redraw the name Zest. I'm gonna keep it in a similar typeface because I quite like it. And as you can see, I'm only doing my sketches in gray lead at the moment. I'll add the color later on. So I draw out the word zest, like so. And instead of having a pineapple as part of the, the design, I'm going to use a different fruit. Instead, this time, I'm going to say, let's use the top of an apple as well as the bottom of an apple. And to make it really clear, I'll have a little stalk, maybe even a little flower little leaf sorry and then I can add in spots for reflection that I can color in later so what I've done is I've taken the original design I've substituted the apple from the pineapple the next one is combine even though it is second we're gonna do this one last so we're gonna come back to it we're gonna move on to a which is adapt so what we need to do to adapt is we need to adapt the design to suit the same the same kind of audience, so youngish people, but we're going to try and change it a little bit just to explore in a different light. So I'm going to use a similar typeface. Again, I'm going to curve it a little bit, and I might even alter the size of the letters. So as you can see, it still has that kind of fun aesthetic that the target audience might find appealing. And what I'll then do is I'm going to place it within this kind of splash, like so. Kind of giving it that fruit effect. I might even place some images directly of fruit as that's part of the requirements. And I can go back and alter that later. So I've adapted this design to suit for a new audience. We can see the similar connection with the typeface as well as the style of drawing used for these visuals. The bottom one here for M is modify. So for modify, you need to modify the overall look of the design. So it needs to be changed, it might need to be enhanced in certain ways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify my type to be a bit more direct or a bit more diagonal. So we can see that I'm altering the typeface to be a little bit different, but similar still in overall style. And then I'm gonna modify the use of shape within my design. And I'm gonna go for a kind of a dragon through aesthetic, just using basic shapes. So I've gone through and I've modified certain features. I've made the text a little bit more diagonal, a little bit more diverse rather than just plain like this. And I've modified the use of shape. So I can go back then and add little features that I could then color in later to replicate that of a dragon fruit more clearly. P stands for put to another use. And what that means is we need to adapt for a new audience. So whilst this logo probably appeals to more of a younger age range, we're gonna try and change it to be a little bit more um, elderly, a little bit more sophisticated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our typeface, I'm gonna make it a bit thinner, and I'm gonna make it a serif typeface. So that means it has these little footings on the end of the letters that you can see me drawing, so these here. So I'm going to finish off that. And as you can see, it's already altering the look, which means it is altering the audience. 
because I'm trying to cater to probably an older audience, I want to minimize the amount of visuals. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use line to formulate an interesting feature around it like so. So it still has that link to kind of fruit and vegetables because you can see it kind of resembles this dragon fruit that I initially used, but I've simplified it and made it a little bit less busy, a little bit more focused, a little bit more mature. I could then go back and then color this using a simple gray scale to keep it really refined and sophisticated. E is eliminate. And what that means is we need to take away from our design. We've been adding a lot to it, trying to make it a little bit more complicated. What we're going to do now is we're going to minimize it and simplify it quite easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse kind of my initial font, but I'm going to round the edges a little bit. So I'm going to eliminate those corners. As you can see, I've probably generated a more family friendly young people font. And on the side here, I'm going to draw a really simplified version of a pineapple. And I'm just gonna leave it like so, I could then color that in a flat color. I've eliminated it, I've simplified it. It's a really, really interesting design, but it does still connect to all the ones that I've explored before. R stands for reverse. And this can be a challenging one because it's asking you to reverse specific parts of your design. What I've done so far is I've emphasized the text within my design. In every single one, the text is the first thing we see. I'm gonna reverse that and make the focus actually the fruit. So I'm gonna draw a pineapple like so. Really emphasizing it, providing it with detail. Might even add these lines in here for texture. And then across the front here, I'm gonna use lowercase letters and they're gonna be quite thin to spell out the title of the cafe. So we can actually see the Z kind of overlays. I'd imagine that this would be see-through text or white and that this is our focus. So what I've done, I've not only reversed the emphasis from um, the text to the actual symbol, I've reversed the style of font. So these are all capital letters. Now I've created them as lowercase letters. Now that I've got seven interesting designs to choose from, I can do my combine. So what you have to do for your combine is you need to choose two or more designs out of the seven that you've already done and create a brand new eighth one. So for combine, what I'm gonna do is I actually quite like the font in here, but I don't particularly like the visuals. What I might do is I might use that font and combine it with this feature here from the modifier. So I'm gonna combine M and P, and I'm gonna redraw my font like so. Can always go back and edit it if I need to add certain things. And then using some of the stuff from Modify, I'm gonna really clearly try and create this dragon fruit effect using just basic shapes. But what I'm gonna do later is I'm going to use grayscale to keep it really refined and just use different shades of gray some really dark, some really light, to color in those pieces. And I might do something similar for my letters. But that is how you approach creating your scamper. You do it in gray lead first, and then once you're done, you can outline and fine line it, and it should look something like this. So after it's all colored in, and refined, hopefully it should look something like this. We're expecting good quality at the development of concept stage, so exploration of different drawing materials, whatever you have available at home, markers, gray lead, colored pencils, and if you have access to fine liners and other things, please feel free to use them. 
In another video, I'll show you guys how to approach the annotation process using reflective, critical, and creative annotations.